And welcome back. We have match 15 of day one of the Alliance Tournament Finals. We have the Ronan versus Electus Matari. You are listening to Verona and Angel Hun. You can see on the left-hand side of your screen, highlighted in red on your overview, we have the Ronan fielding a Loki, three Proteus, three Ishkas, two Manticos, and a Guardian. And from Electus Matari, we see a Dominix, three Drakes, an Onyx, a Basilisk, two Manticores, and two Griffins. Uh, very Kaldari heavy, uh, very perhaps unusual setup. I don't think we've seen any heavy interdictors. Um, I'm not sure if they're aware that the arena is actually bubbled. Um, um, I'm not exactly sure. I think probably EM are going for a really, really heavy passive tank there, I should imagine. It's the certainly possible. They can actually put, the Yonks can actually put out a really very decent passive tank, so we'll have to see what the, uh, the thought is behind that. Um, who would you put your money on in this case, Angel? I'm going to go with tournament veterans, uh, the Ronin. They've, they've been here a lot. Um, they, they are relatively consistent in getting at least to the finals weekend. I like the perhaps the diversity of their setup of a little bit better. I, I guess I'm biased uh, against the Drakes and the single Dominics. I, I just don't see necessarily where this is going. Perhaps the Dominics will be cap transferring with the Basilisk to support it, but I don't really see right off the bat what Electus Mentari is going for. Yeah, we do have the countdown from CCP Claw in local the matches go. Um, we've got an absolute pile of bouncer twos on the field from um, from Electus Matari. And really, that can only come from one ship, the Dominics. Yeah, the Dominics. So. We have a full complement of bouncer twos on the field for them there. Um, not a massive amount of DPS going on at present, but yeah, I mean, I'd really like to see Electus Matari do well. I've got a, I'm, I'm a bit biased as well. I've got a lot of personal friends there. But um, I think in this case the Ronan just seem to have the stronger, uh, the stronger team. I mean, the logistics looks really good on the side of EM. Um, we can see there already two of the ships from um, we see a Proteus and an Ishka from the Ronan uh, taking quite a bit of uh, shield damage. All gone now into armor. I think the Guardian pilot's really going to have to work overtime if EM starts splitting their damage. Uh, I mean, the Ronan team is def definitely more range, uh, perhaps challenged than. The Electris Matari team, I, I'm just not necessarily sure that that the the heavy reliance on Kaldari missile boats and especially that Onyx, it, it seems like a waste of points to me. It seems a bit bizarre, but I can see what Electus Matari have done here. They've got the two Manticores there. Well, one Manticore now because it looks as if we've just lost one. And they've got two Griffins there as EW support. They've got three fairly heavily passive tank drakes. Um, an Oinx that is going to be able to do exactly the same. It's going to be very heavily passive tanked. Um, they've got the Basilisk and the Dommy to support it. Uh, it looks it looks fairly solid. It's just, it's really... Um it, it does look like an interesting setup, perhaps. I, I believe this could be effective maybe even on TQ in a roaming game, but... I'd like to try it, actually. I, I Well, uh, count me in. I'll, I'll come. Yeah, I'll I'll li I'd actually like to try it. It's an interesting loadout. I mean, if you were to take it on a TQ, you'd have the tackle there as well from the Oinks, so it, it is really interesting. Uh, I'm trying to get a close-up of that dummy just to see exactly how it's fitted. But uh, uh, It looks like it might have energy transfers going on between the Basilisk. Uh, see, uh, one of the Proteus there for... Um, we lost the both the Manticores for EM. One of the Proteus there, big part of the DPS for their team... Uh, Heavily into armor. Looks as if we're going to lose him soon. I'm betting that those both of those Griffins have that Guardian locked down hard, so that he can't really do anything. I'm going to try and get a close up of him to see what he's doing. Oh, absolutely. Um, and he appears he is actually armor transferring, but he's got no cap transfer going. So it's it's interesting. The Electric Matari team can can split damage quite readily uh, as they can have a volley of missiles in the air, switch targets, activate missiles again on a secondary target and really keep that Guardian guessing. Uh, it's it's sort of an interesting tactic maybe to frazzle uh, Princess Komi uh, in, in the Guardian. I'm not sure if it's going to prove effective. It looks like uh, the Ronin have changed targets to the uh, Dominics. Uh, they've eliminated one Griffin at this point. It It's unusual. I don't necessarily see a whole lot of consistent DPS coming out of the Electus Matari team, although one of the Proteus, uh, Shiva Shivaja, the, I believe the previous Queen of Outer Ring, uh, may be going down momentarily. Yeah, the Dominic's there looks as if it's not been remote supported by um, by the uh, the logistics of Electus Matari at all. It looks as if it's pretty much on its own. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Electus Matari fare when that Dominic does go down. He's fairly close. We can see him clawing shield back there, so... Perhaps he is now being supported by the dummy, uh, by the uh, basilisk. He's probably giving him a call. But I can see the one of the Proteus there for uh, 
for the Ronin, just absolutely surrounded by a swarm of armor maintenance bots. And he is recovering uh, thanks to both the Guardian and the triple the triple Ishkers on the field. Um, he's recovered quite a bit of armor at this point. Uh, the Proteus are were also right on top of the Dominics if, in case you guys could not see that. Um, so really able to lay into that battleship, that enormous battleship with their with their blasters. And the, coincidentally, these, these teams didn't start that far apart. They were only about 40, 50 clicks apart. Um, they're not really, the ships aren't really speed fitted. They're not doing a very high speed. It's took them a while to get in range of each other. But um, yeah, Electus Matari, unfortunately, um, yeah, I don't think they're going to last much not longer. Not going to hold on. It's, um, it was an interesting loadout. It was a bit strange to see it, but... Um, I, I thought it was I thought it was quite. I'd be interested to see what the Onyx was fit with. I, because yeah, yeah. Its damage potential isn't necessarily very high. It has certainly has p the potential for an extremely strong tank, although it can still fit five missile la heavy missile launchers with adequate room for perhaps an energy transfer. I, I'm not really sure. It's interesting, Brown. Uh, we're seeing the Loki being used as, um, quite often now as a command ship. Yeah, it's. Um, I think that that. Um the T3s generally tend to excel at that level, but oh, massive smart bombs there from the Drake, uh, trying to get <laughs> as many of those maintenance bots off that Proteus. I think he killed uh, the Manticore. Possible. I think he did actually kill a Manticore with those, uh, with those uh, smart bombs there. Um, trying to get as many of the drones off that, uh, off that Proteus as possible. Oh, massive amounts of them going up there. I, I'm not sure if there's going to be enough damage. Perhaps too little, too late from these Drakes, uh, as we still have the Prote as we still have the Guardian on the field to repair. Oh, and there's one Drake down for Electus Matari. Two, two left on the field and one Oinks. Um The Ronan only having lost one Manticore to Smart Bomb Fire, I believe it was from uh, Electus Matari. Um, so yeah, I mean, I could see where EM was going with the setup, but um, it just doesn't look as if it's really paid off. I think against a less uh, heavily tanked team, uh, this could have been perhaps more effective. Yeah, I think it was a lack of DPS on the part oh, of the It was, I mean, they've got a really heavy tank, but they've just got nothing offensive. Well, they had great, they had control of range, so as they they warped in at 50, so yeah. they obviously wanted range. Um, I'm not sure if those Griffins were really resilient enough to be such, uh, uh, to, uh, the reliance on them. Uh, being that flimsy is just sort of the risk versus reward is necessarily not necessarily there. It, it, it was an interesting decision. Um, they they controlled. They were they should have been able to control distance. Uh, maybe the addition of a Hugin would have been would have been interesting. Um, I think uh, if they had been able to really control the range of the Ronin, uh, Tatari's setup could have fared quite a bit better. But uh, that is not to be. It looks like the Ronin will proceed. Yeah, I mean, you can expect it from the Ronin. They're tournament veterans, as you said earlier. They're a, they're a good team. They know what they're doing. Um, they can PvP on TQ when they want to. Um, that last Drake there for Electus Matari. I mean, I'm a bit sad for Electus Matari. They made it through into the finals. They made it through into the knockout stages, and I really would have liked to see them advance. Um, but when you come up against a team, it was a, it was a tough draw for Electus Matari regardless. It absolutely was. Um, this is a death death in the bracket. I mean, really, none of these matches are going to be easy for any team uh, at this moment, except maybe uh, the 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 most clearly overmatched team would have been Tormentum versus Pandemic Legion. Absolutely. But, uh, otherwise, these have been very balanced balanced matches, at least on paper. Um, Electus Matari uh, losing their last Drake. Uh, not, obviously not seeing much utility in the Onyx, leaving it for last, uh, which is probably a, a fairly wise decision on their part. Uh, yeah, I think they're probably going to want to loot more than anything else, clear the field up and um, maybe see what Electus Matari had fitted. Uh, try and claw back a bit of profit to replace that Manticore, maybe. Uh, not that it's that expensive. A bit <laughs> yet. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, every is helps in the tournament, and uh, if they can claw back as much as they can from loot, then... It's um, you know it puts them in good stead for the next round. It's really unfortunate to see um, uh, go out. I really would like to see them advance. It's been interesting. We've seen a lot of uh, protei from uh, the Ronin. They're really making use of those really heavy uh, blaster setups with uh, most likely three mag stabs um, and uh, scrambler. Uh, they use them as super heavy tackle with just an amazing amount of in your face DPS. Um, which is interesting, as we don't see a whole lot of uh, Galente ships really because of their range limitations. Yeah, I mean, they're basically, the Proteus like that works basically as a Deimos that works. An actual <laughs> Deimos that is useful a and not just a horrid, 
Yeah, not just a horrid glass cannon that's totally useless. I um, love the demos. I, I love, love this. I absolutely love the ship. I love the concept of it, but it's it just, just not. It's not tough enough, and it's not resilient enough for the, the tournament, so we never see it. But with a Proteus, you can swap out the subsystems a bit. You can give it a little bit more effective hit points. You can give it a decent amount of DPS, and it's here, and it can do a good job as a fairly fast, heavy hitting tackler. And uh, I mean, you can get upwards of eight eight hundred DPS out of those blasters, especially on ships that are webbed, painted. Uh, even on frigates that are also that are weapon painted, uh, we're seeing uh, just the end of this onyx at this point. All three produces right on top of him. Um, I'm going to once again call this one for the Ronin. Yeah, I, I, I think it's given now. It's unfortunate that uh, the DM have gone out and you know, bad luck to those guys. But Ronin take the field, and we can pass back to Soundwave.